Seraphim can be viewed as the most powerful order of angels the most powerful demons sometimes said to have been seraphim before they fell from grace and became malevolent entities. However, it is important to note that certain named archangels, especially Michael, are often considered the most powerful angels. Michael, for example, is seen as a warrior and protector, and in the Bible, he is depicted as leading the heavenly host in the battle against Satan and the forces of evil. One reason that explains this is that the word archangel has multiple meanings. In angelology, it usually refers to the second lowest angelic order. However, in the Bible, the word archangel has a more general meaning that simply denotes superior angelic beings. The word seraphim is derived from the Hebrew word seraph, which means to burn and reflects their intense, fiery nature usually associated with their burning love for God. They are mentioned explicitly in the Bible only in the book of Isaiah, where they appear in a vision experienced by the prophet Isaiah. In this vision, the seraphim are described as having six wings, two covering their faces, two covering their feet, and two for flying. Seraphim are considered the highest order of angels in the Christian angelic hierarchy. This based on the classification system developed by Pseudo-Dionysius the Areopagite in his work, The Celestial Hierarchy. Thomas Aquinas, in his Summa Theologica, further developed the understanding of seraphim, emphasizing their unmatched love for God and their superior knowledge of divine truths. As part of the first triad in the angelic hierarchy, along with cherubim and thrones, Seraphim serve as intermediaries between God and the lower orders of angels, transmitting divine illumination throughout the cosmos. All right, let's get into it. Pseudo Dionysius the Areopagite, an influential Christian theologian and philosopher of the late 5th and early 6th century, provides a detailed account of the seraphim in his work, The Celestial Hierarchy. Drawing upon the biblical account in Isaiah and upon Neoplatonic philosophy, Pseudo Dionysius classifies the seraphim as the highest order of the nine angelic orders, surpassing even the cherubim and thrones in their closeness to God. According to Pseudo Dionysius, the seraphim are characterized by their fervent love for and unparalleled knowledge of God. Their primary function is to participate in and transmit divine light and knowledge to the lower orders of angels, and ultimately to humans. Seraphim, along with cherubim and thrones, form the first triad, or the supercelestial realm. Their role in the celestial hierarchy is crucial, as they serve as intermediaries between God and the lower orders of angels. Pseudo-Dionysius' conception of seraphim had a significant impact on Christian theology. His classification of the angelic hierarchy was widely adopted and further developed by later theologians, such as Thomas Aquinas and John of Damascus. Furthermore, his depiction of the seraphim as the highest order of angels, characterized by their ardent love for God, inspired numerous mystical writings and reflections on the nature of divine love. Thomas Aquinas, the esteemed 13th century theologian and philosopher, explored the subject of seraphim in his work, Summa Theologica. Building upon Pseudo Dionysius' concept of the angelic hierarchy, Aquinas delved deeper into the nature and function of these celestial beings. In the hierarchy of angels, Aquinas recognized Pseudo-Dionysius' classification and assigned seraphim the highest position. He maintained that the seraphim, cherubim, and thrones form the first triad of angelic orders, with the seraphim being closest to God in both knowledge and love. Aquinas believed that the seraphim are largely distinguished by their singular love for and profound knowledge of God. Their defining characteristic, ardent love for the divine, illuminates their intellect, enabling them to grasp the deepest understanding of divine truths. Furthermore, Aquinas emphasized the seraphim's ability to perceive God intellectually and spiritually, which surpasses the clarity and depth of any other angelic order. Aquinas also argued that the seraphim play a crucial role in enlightening the lower angelic orders, this predicated on their unfathomable knowledge and immeasurable love. They transmit the divine light and wisdom they obtain from God to the cherubim and other angelic ranks, 
which then cascade through the celestial hierarchy and down to humanity. In addition to their role in disseminating divine knowledge, Aquinas posited that the seraphim actively participate in the celestial ministry, aiding in the governance of the universe according to God's will. Aquinas also ascribed a superlative degree of purity to the seraphim, as they are perpetually immersed in the contemplation of God, free from any desire for material or earthly things. In the book of Isaiah, the seraphim are introduced in a dramatic and vivid vision experienced by the prophet Isaiah. This vision, described in Isaiah 6 7, portrays the seraphim as celestial beings surrounding God's throne, praising and worshipping God in an awe-inspiring display of devotion. In the vision, Isaiah sees the Lord seated on a high and exalted throne, with the train of his robe filling the temple. The seraphim, each of whom has six wings, stand around the throne. They use two wings to cover their faces, symbolizing their humility and reverence in the presence of divine glory. They use two wings to cover their feet, an act that connotes their recognition of their unworthiness and creaturely status before the Creator. The final pair of wings is used for flying, indicating their readiness to serve God and execute His commands. The seraphim continuously praise and worship God, calling out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. This threefold repetition of holy emphasizes the utter holiness and transcendence of God, setting Him apart from all of creation. The seraphim's proclamation also acknowledges God's pervasive presence, as His glory fills the entire earth. As the seraphim praise God, their voices are so powerful that they cause the doorposts and thresholds of the temple to shake, filling the temple with smoke. This manifestation of the divine presence and power evokes fear and awe in Isaiah, who becomes acutely aware of his own sinfulness and the sinfulness of his people. He exclaims, Woe to me! I am ruined! For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. In response to Isaiah's distress, one of the seraphim takes a live coal from the altar with a pair of tongs and touches it to Isaiah's lips. The seraphim then declares that Isaiah's guilt is removed and his sin is atoned for. This act of purification prepares Isaiah for his prophetic mission, as he goes on to accept God's call to be his messenger to the people of Judah and Jerusalem.